this, you're fucked. Try that, you're fucked. You're fucked, you're fucked, you're fucked, you're fucked, you're fucked, you're fucked, you're fucked. This is beyond any doubt the worst Sega Genesis game I have ever played. There's gotta be something I'm doing wrong. Let me see. Maybe it's on a really high difficulty setting. Yeah, let me see what I can do here. Um, easy? It was on easy? That's their idea of fucking easy? Are they out of their minds? All right, let's flick that shit switch and crank up that diarrhea dial. I got Dark Castle on C, D, <laughs> Since this is a more advanced console, you'd think maybe this one would be a little better, right? Well, the graphics are even cheesier and more cartoonish, and the controls... Oh my fucking god, it's even worse. I can barely even fucking move! The control is impossible! You can't control it. You have more control over the weather than you do in the character in this game. <clears throat> I keep dying instantly on the first screen. I can't even move an inch before I get bombarded with the Space Invaders ensemble of bats. Jeez, you can't even let me walk two feet before raining enemies down on me? It still takes just as long to aim your arm at somebody. And you can get dizzy just by jumping. Oh, a platform dropped. What, I stood still too long? You can't stand for more than two seconds? The stairs, good lord. I just keep slipping all over the place. Why can't I do anything? The Genesis version was bad, but this one fucks you harder than life itself. It's like mixing shit with turds. It's the most heinously anus thing ever conceived by humankind. It's a curse to the soul, and it must suffer the tortures of the damned. In the beginning, the game company called Wisdom Tree began producing unlicensed games for the NES. Wisdom Tree said, let there be shit, and there was shit. Yeah, you know what I'm talking about. Bible games, like Bible Buffet, where you're blown off a snowman's head, which has nothing to do with the Bible. Super Noah's Ark 3D, where you're slingshot and pissed off animals. Sunday Fun Day, where you're killing random people on your way to church. And all those ridiculous CDI games. We talked about these games in my previous Bible Games episodes, so what's the point of going on anymore? Because part three is never as good. But, you know, there's a few more Bible Games left, so I might as well finish what I started. I mentioned before that there's a Game Boy game called the King James Bible. Since then, I've actually gotten the game in my possession, so I might as well try it out. I gotta admit, I thought this game would be nothing more than just reading the Bible on a Game Boy, but there actually are a couple games involved. The first one is a stupid memory game. All you do is match the words. The other one is just like playing Hangman with sheep. You have to guess the hidden word by choosing all the correct letters. If you choose a wrong letter, one of the sheep will hop the fence. If they all get over the fence, you lose. Like right now, I'm really stumped. Damn, fucking sheep. All right, what's the word? Goodliest? Who the fuck uses a word like that? Blessedness? Of course, they're all ancient words that nobody says anymore in common speech. Well, that's all there is to that. I marvel at this game's shitliness. Of course, you can read the Bible, basically if you want to use your Game Boy as an old-fashioned ebook reader. I wonder how many batteries you need to go through the whole thing. The other thing you can do is search for words in the Bible. For example, we could search, I don't know, how about the word ass? 
Okay, I had no idea there'd be this many results. Then they rent their clothes and laid at every man his ass. Lose his ox or his ass? Whose ass have I taken? Deliver unto his neighbor an ass? Which of you shall have an ass? He had found a young ass, the dumb ass. It says dumb ass in the Bible. Saddled his ass, opened his sack to give his ass. The lion had not eaten the carcass or torn the ass, riding upon his ass. Uh, I'm going to hell. Next game, we have something kind of special. It's an unlicensed NES game called Six and One. That's pretty much the title. How creative. Unofficially, it's known as Cauldron Six and One because the company who made it, Cauldron, went out of business before they sold off all their games. Hot selling. Yeah, right. Well, another company called Myriad bought their inventory, slapped their own sticker on the front, and started selling them again. For this reason, the Myriad version is even more rare. Its price in auctions is usually much higher than the Cauldron version, even though technically they are both the same exact game. Myriad didn't make any programming changes whatsoever. Even the title screen still says Cauldron on it. That sticker on the front, let me tell you, that is one expensive sticker. With that bit of trivia, you're probably wondering, what does this have to do with the Bible? Well, there's six games on it, all of them suck major shit, and they definitely went for quantity over quality, much like Action 52, although it's not that bad. Honestly, the games aren't horrible, they're just mediocre copycats of other games. Cosmos Cop is a ripoff of Space Harrier, Balloon Monster is a ripoff of Buster Brothers, Porter is a ripoff of Sakoban, Pokemon is a ripoff of Make Tracks, also known as Crush Roller. Magic Carpet 1001 is sadly the most original of all of them. But there is one Bible game on it, Adam and Eve. It's a two-player co-op game where you fly around on balloons and try to land on top of cute little worms. Out of all the games on this cartridge, this is probably the most original. They sure put a new twist on the story. Instead of Adam and Eve being a man and a woman, they're now asexual twins. Take your guess which is which. The one with green hair or the one with red skin? Are they aliens or something? Is that why there's space in the background? The tree of life apparently is now just a few bamboo sticks crossed together. The serpent is now a whole army of balloon flying worms. And there's a bird that lays eggs on you. What kind of bird lays eggs while it's flying? That's like a human mother running a marathon and just dropping out a baby. The only other thought is that it's an egg-shaped piece of shit, but it's from a bird, so it would usually be white, which would be the color of an egg, but instead, it's brown like shit. I don't know what I'm talking about. I myself wouldn't know how to make a game based on Adam and Eve, but I'd never think to make the forbidden fruit actually count as points. What were they thinking when they came up with this? I guess they were just trying to be really original. Well, nope. Actually, it's a complete ripoff of Balloon Fight. And if you really want to go back further, Balloon Fight was very similar in gameplay style to Joust, just with balloons instead of, well, ostriches. So basically, the game has nothing to do with the Bible. So why am I even bothering to include it as part of Bible games? Well, here's a better question. Why the fuck did they call it Adam and Eve? Well, that's the last of the Bible games on the Nintendo consoles. It sure was a sacrilegious shit stain on the NES library, but it wasn't enough for Wisdom Tree, no. They had to put out their games on the Sega Genesis console as well. Tell you the truth, these are all games I've reviewed already on NES. Sometimes the Genesis versions are different, like they were with Action 52, but this is not the case here. All these games are nearly identical to their 8-bit counterparts. Spiritual warfare is pretty much the same. You know, that Legend of Zelda clone where drug dealers are shooting lasers at you from alleyways. Since the whole game functions just like Zelda, with item inventory and everything like that, wouldn't it have been nice to use the same save feature? Instead, there's this annoying password system. If you're gonna copy anything from Zelda, have a save feature. And that was on NES, so you'd think with a more advanced console, they'd be able to do that again. Then there's Exodus and Joshua, which were both the same two games anyway, which were both adapted from a game called Crystal Mines. Not much to reiterate here, just going around blasting giant cheese puffs. Then there's Bible Adventures, which again is the same as the NES version, just with slightly different graphics. 
Gotta love that classic Baby Moses game. The best part's drowning your own baby and then killing yourself. Isn't that nice? Then of course there's David and Goliath, which might as well be called David and the fucking sheep, because that's all you do is carry sheep from one place to the next. Man, who the hell is able to pick up three sheep and climb a tree? And this may seem like a minor complaint, but when you pause the game, the music keeps going. I hate games that do that. What if you get a phone call or something? You want it to go quiet. This game is extremely frustrating and it's bad control. There's a part where you have to climb up a mountain, but no matter how hard you try, you keep slipping off the platforms. Ugh. Ugh. Oh, fuck. All right, here we go. Ugh. Ugh. Bitch. You think these are doors, right? Well, guess what? You can't go in. They're just for decoration. So maybe they're miniature monoliths from 2001. When you do manage to get to the top, there's nowhere left to go. You have to take a shitty guess and jump at thin air. See, there's another platform you're supposed to reach, but you never know otherwise. It's literally a leap of faith. The other game on the cartridge is Noah's Ark. This is the one where you painstakingly have to pick up every animal on the screen and carry them to the ark. I've mentioned before how Noah is some super strong freak of nature, but he does have his limits. He can jump while carrying almost any animal, but an ox, nope, that's too much. Every animal has their own specific rules, and it makes no fucking sense. The most annoying is the snakes. Man, Noah has some balls to be rescuing snakes. Indiana Jones wouldn't do that. No, he thinks Noah is a snake-saving shit sucker. Pee Wee Herman once saved snakes, but he fainted. That's right. In order of manliness, Indiana Jones, then Pee Wee, and then fucking Noah. Keep in mind, Noah also has to be able to identify the male and female animals. So, how does he have such a keen instinct for this? I mean, I'm no bird expert, but does the toucan exhibit any clear signs of its gender? If it's a female, does Noah look at it and think to himself, look at the cans on that toucan? The graphics are dull. There's so much brown. The arc is brown, the trees are brown. Why does everything gotta be the color of shit? It might as well be shit. Yeah, those trees in the background are like logs of shit coming out of God's ass. It's holy shit. Things get all fucked up by level three. You gotta start collecting seven of each animal. Seven? What, are you kidding me? The monkeys. I hate them. They're so fucking hard to catch. I'm gonna get you, you stupid monkey. Yeah, whatever it takes, fuck face. You're slime. You're filth. I'm gonna rip you apart. Oh, and you're actually not supposed to save the monkeys. You're supposed to get the fruit that they're throwing. Really? How's I supposed to guess that? So the monkeys are supposed to drown in the flood after all. One of the worst things about this game is that Noah needs to visually inspect every animal you catch. It's not enough that the inventory is on the screen, clear as day, but no, you gotta watch every single animal run into the ark, one after another. Imagine if in Super Mario Brothers, after you beat the level, you have to watch every fucking coin bounce across the screen. I can't believe I actually decided to play through this whole game. I was curious about the ending, and it's not worth bragging about. It's just a suitcase floating in the sewers. Oh wait, that's supposed to be the Ark with the Flood. It rests on the mountaintop, and that's it. Well, that's Bible Adventures. That takes care of all the Bible games on Genesis. I could end things now but I really don't want there to ever be a Bible Games 4. So there's one little bit of unfinished business, an NES game called King of Kings. I already reviewed this as part of my first Bible Games episode. It has three games in it, Jesus in the Temple, which is that Mario 2 ripoff where you're hopping across logs. Then there's the Wise Men where you're traveling to baby Jesus. That means it's the only Christmas game. Isn't that the whole reason I did this in December? Why did I do all these other Bible Games? I guess when it comes to bad games, I go above and beyond. But the one game I slacked on was Flight to Egypt. All I said was, it's bad. But let me tell you, it's not just bad, it's horrendous. Every pixel in this game is a sin. First of all, I don't get the title, Flight to Egypt? You're not flying, you're riding on a donkey or an ass if you prefer. What airline is this, Ass Express? And yes, I know the word flight doesn't necessarily mean aviation, but hey, it's a fucking joke. Your only attack is this embarrassing, dinky little kick which can't harm anything unless it's right up in your ass. 
Or I should say, your ass is ass, not your ass that's sitting upon the ass. I guess you're supposed to be on a mountain because you're always moving upward. You think you're moving right horizontally, but really you're on an upward slant, spiraling around. So if you fall down, you're actually backtracking to where you just were. Isn't that weird? And what's with all the ice stages? You're supposed to be going to Egypt. Did you get sidetracked on the fucking North Pole? When you collect health, it only counts if you're able to answer a Bible question. I beheld blank as lightning fall from heaven. Hmm, anyone who's seen Street Fighter the movie should know that one. And here's a tip. Anytime it's a true or false question, if it has anything to do with killing, then it's always true. There's not much else to say about this shit heap. I might as well just leave it at, it's bad. But the truth is, it's even worse. At least we can check out the ending. They arrive safely in Egypt, and an angel visits Joseph. And that's it. Did anything else happen? Did the angel say anything? Did the sight of the angel make Joseph sick in his stomach? Did the donkey stalk them in their sleep? What happened? I assumed that I pressed a button by mistake and actually canceled out the rest of the ending. But no, I've actually beaten the game multiple times just to try and solve this mystery and the same thing happens. It just stays on this screen until you press something and then it returns you to the main menu. But I'm aware that the last screen is supposed to be plain text that says, give your heart to Jesus. But I'm not seeing it, so I'm assuming I'm supposed to beat all three games to see the true ending. And I'm not going through all that trouble, although I will give my heart to Jesus. <laughs> ah! Ah, Jesus! three Ghostbusters again, I and mean, what's their problem with Winston? What are they, fucking racist or something? Well, whatever the case, you get to pick your Ghostbuster. They got big heads and they walk like they're cracking down their pants. You got dialogue scenes and not one, but two stores, an item shop and a weapon shop, again resorting to that old tired idea of having the Ghostbusters buy all their own equipment. Then you got the map screen, which, thank God, it serves the only purpose that it should, selecting which order you want to play the stages in. So you can go into the little house, the apartment, the bigger house, the high-rise building, and after you've beaten all that, you can go to the castle. The stages are non-linear in the sense that you don't just run through from beginning to end. you got to find your way around. You can climb ladders, swim, and explore the whole place until you've found and defeated all the boss ghosts, which there's several of. And when you've defeated them, you get to lay a trap and catch a slimer in true ghost-busting fashion. After you've cleared the stage, you get money, and then you leave. So that's the concept, which is enough to keep you entertained. The control is great. Walking and jumping is perfectly responsive. You can easily shoot in any direction. You can crawl. It's fun blasting things. The sounds and music are original, and the caricature look I find kind of amusing, actually. This is what you call a game. I like this. I like this? I can't believe what I'm saying. I think the world is coming to an end. Seriously, like fire and brimstone coming down from the skies. Rivers and seas boiling. Forty years of darkness. Earthquakes. Volcanoes. The dead rising from the graves. Human sacrifice. Dogs and cats living together. Mass hysteria. But don't worry. I'll find something about it that sucks. Like those tablecloths that wrap you up? You can't even do anything but wait. They don't even do any damage, so what's the point? Just to be annoying. You might as well just have somebody come in and take the controller from you for about five seconds. There's also an overabundance of weapons and items which, out of all of them, only one is really mandatory. The night goggles. Without them, there's no way you can get through the fire level because you can't see shit. Look at this. I can't tell where I'm going. And the goggles run out of juice, so if you're far along in the level and they start to dim, you're fucked. You gotta kill yourself go back to the store to buy more goggles, and then start the level all over again. What a shitload of fuck. I also hate these fire towers. It's like, no matter how well you estimate the jump, you either end up getting burnt because you jump too short, or accidentally touch the fire trying to get as close as possible to jump. And also, you have to make sure that you time your jump right, or the fire comes up and burns your ass. And if you stand there to even try to think about it, a flaming guinea pig comes out. 
Yeah, flaming guinea pigs are pretty weird, but you know what's also weird? When you die, you turn into a mummy. That I can't understand. Then you got these disappearing green things to jump on. Ugh. Guess what the toughest enemies in the game are? Coffee cups. You'd think they'd shatter after just one hit, but no, they take forever to break. I don't get it. Lots of the enemies are just annihilated after just one hit, but not those. Don't fuck with the coffee cups. The boss battles are cool, although sometimes really random, like this blue guy that comes apart. Come on, die! All right. Oh, he's still got a head. Yeah. You got the crystal monkey man, the evil snowman, the fire dragon, the flame guy, the face that emerges from the wall, the woman who multiplies to three, gotta shoot the real one. Then there's the grim reaper who looks like Dracula from Castlevania 2. Then there's the plant which reminds me a little shop of horrors, which is an interesting connection because Rick Moranis starred in the remake and he was Lewis in Ghostbusters. Then you got Stay Puff who relentlessly attacks you during the stage, but then at the end you finally get to punish him for all the shit he put you through. Die, die, get him, get him, get him, get him, get him, get him, yeah, he's dead as shit. In a sea of terrible Ghostbusters games, this one stands out, and it's still fun to play. If you could somehow get your hands on it, I'd check it out. So this concludes my three-part review of all the Ghostbusters games that I can get my hands on. Is it kind of ironic that I end on one that's actually kind of decent? I don't know. I mean, is it any more ironic that the same guy who did the voice for Garfield did the voice for Peter Venkman in the Ghostbusters cartoon? Well, Bill Murray was live-action Peter Venkman, and he also did the voice of Garfield in the movie. And one more thing. Ghostbusters 3. Is it really going to happen? Should it happen? Well, if they made the Santa Claus 3, Free Willy 3, Home Alone 3, Psycho 3, The NeverEnding Story 3, Problem Child 3, and about 10,000 scary movie and American Pie sequels, all the crap that gets shot out of Hollywood's big fat fucking ass, I don't see why Ghostbusters 3 shouldn't get made. I grew up with those movies. I would love to see those guys put on the proton packs one more time. Even if the whole movie is just the Ghostbusters sitting around taking a shit, I'd go see it. Now, excuse me, I gotta take out the garbage. Spider-Man on the Atari 2600. Let's pop this sucker in here. We're playing with the Atari wireless controller. Pretty nifty, right? Atari was ahead of their time. So you just climb up the building, you're shooting a web, which is like black for some reason. It almost looks like Spider-Man shooting out like a long turd or something. And you can't touch anything except the yellow parts. So, oh, the web didn't reach. Ah, oh, I'm falling. But you can save yourself, you just keep shooting the web. So anyway, you're just trying to get up here shoot diagonal too, but it's really finicky with the controller. Ah, oh, fuck! Oh, God. Oh, shit! This game is just fucking horrible! Holy shit! It's Spider-Man! You need some help with this game? I sure do! This shitty-ass fucking game is driving me nuts! This game can't be shitty. This is Spider-Man! Yeah, it's Spider-Man, but I'm sorry, Spider-Man. This game really does suck. You must be doing something wrong. Let me help you with this game. You'll help me with this game? Absolutely. Oh, gee whiz. Thanks, Spider-Man. I'll show you how it's done. See, you gotta press the up, right? Yeah, I got that part. It's really so easy, it's practically boring in a way. You can just go up, up, up. See, I like going diagonal because sometimes it gets boring going straight. Get into the top, get to the top. Get to the top. Oh, 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 da 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 James likes the little web. Little web, little web, little web, little web, little web, little web. What, what is that thing supposed to be? It's like a like a checkerboard or like a disco cube or something. That's the super bomb. The super bomb. The super bomb. Well, there's bombs in the game. Why can't that bomb look like a bomb? Fucking Spider-Man. Yeah, I touch it. You can't touch the super bomb. Oh, you gotta go around it. Oh, there you go. Watch out. Don't go. He's gonna get gonna hit me. Ah! <laughs> oh, you're falling, you're falling. Oh my god. Ah. When you
you let go, you know what's going to happen? When you let go of that button, you're going to fall. Alright. Now, this is starting to piss me off, actually. There you go, come on. Oh, I get died. Well, you're talking to me. Fuck, load of shit. This is your game. Your game. Shit, fuck. Fuck, get fuck. This game sucks my spider ball. It's horrible. Don't worry, Spider-Man. It's only a game. Here, have a beer. I don't want this corporate bullshit. It's rolling rock. It's shit rock. Stick to the local group. That's a local group. Well, we got another game on the NES, and we're going to play it in the top loader. Yeah, we're being pretty fancy today. The game is Spider-Man Return of the Sinister Shit. I'm trying to understand the controls here. All right, A punches. If you tap A, it does like a jump kick. Oh, you hold the button and it shoots the web. The control is awful, and the worst thing about trying to review a game with bad control is that you can't explain it. You can only jump straight up, unless you, you already push, you know, you're pressing the wrong buttons. No, I'm not. Look, I can't even hit this guy. Oh, look at this. Get him. Why are you fucking jerking around? Even when I'm falling, I can't steer myself. Why are you jumping all over the place? Because every time I hit the button, it, like, jumps. Well, wait for him to come to you. There's no, like, jump kick move. Like, you can't jump and then do an attack. Well, then don't do that move. Well, he, I can't hit him when he's in the air. Well, wait for him to come down, then. Look, now, now what's he doing? He's not going to come up. I can't even tell if I'm hitting him. You got him. Did I? Power bar went down, but you're fucking get, gonna die way before he does. Come on, damn it. Just wait. Patience. There's no fucking clock in this game. There's only 20 of them in the background. Thank fucking lord. Alright. Look, so you can't even kill that one guy. But is it necessary to kill them in all honesty? Do we have to kill everybody we see? I'm the nerd. I'm the nerd. Look how I play. I go back and forth. See, this is what the nerd does. This goes back and forth. And this is what was fucking annoying me. You go when there's nothing up there, so you go down. And you go down. And you kill something, and you fucking go down. You go down, and, and you can't go that way. So you, so you go up. All right, god damn it. There's nothing over here. What the fuck's the point of this? All right, you know what, this, this game is a piece of shit. I don't know what the fuck I'm doing. I don't know where the fuck I'm going. I can't get up here. Do it, damn it. Jump, 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 jump. It's a piece of shit. It's a bunch of fucking crap. All right, we got another game on the Game Boy. Play the Game Boy, you need the game. Here's the game, that's the boy, this is the Game Boy. The game is the Amazing Spider-Man, and believe it or not, the control is even worse. The punch is delayed, like a full second later. And that was the web? That's ridiculous. How do I get up? Jump, jump. I, I am jumping, look, look, it won't, it will fucking look retarded. See, now you're being Spider-Man. Shit. All right, now you're fucking being dead. Look at this, it's just all this falling rock crap on me. Oh, now there's a suicide button in the game. What do you expect? You're fucking jumping while you're trying to hang onto a building. I can't climb up Go there. Go in. I'm yeah, trying. Jump. You have to jump, jump into it. Oh, okay, so that's what the jump button's for. Okay, you're pretty much dependent on the web to get over some of these jumps. But how do you do the web? I don't know. The control just does whatever the fuck it wants. Look at that. Holy shit. Oh my god, I can't. I tried to jump, I swear. This is god awful. This is ass. Let me try that game out. Knock yourself out. What are you doing on my fucking ceiling? 
Okay, I agree. The control is a little delayed. But, oh. Yeah. And then you fucking just like do this. Look, now what are you gonna do there? I don't know. God damn it! Ah! Right, this guy's fucking impossible. Get over here, you fucking son of a bitch! What the fuck is wrong with these game designers? They don't know what the fuck they're doing! I can't believe they did this to me! They made a game out of me and it's fucking shit! It's horrible! One more game, Spider-Man 2 on the Game Boy Advance. Well, I'm playing it on my DS to be exact. Alright, well, this is the first level of the game that you gotta deliver pizzas. They put that in the video game? Well, that's pretty weird. Yeah, I mean, you delivered pizzas before, though, right? No, I, no, I, I never did that. No, yeah, yeah, you did in the movie Spider-Man 2. You, I did that at one point, but I don't want people fucking knowing about that. Did you ever have to break a window to deliver pizza? Not on purpose, but but not to put that in the game. It, it's insulting. And it's well, yeah, I mean, I agree. I'm a superhero. I shouldn't be known as a pizza delivery man. I wish Spider-Man would deliver my pizzas every day. I'm gonna fucking shove a pizza up your fucking ass. Oh. Spider-Man, Spider-Man, takes a dump in a coffee can, plays some games with a grudge, gonna shit out some anal fudge. Look out! Here comes some shitty games. Alcohol is his power source. Takes a piss like a drunken horse. Climbs a wall, then he falls. This game sucks his spider balls. Oh no, he's playing the shitty games. When he plays his games, he feels so ashamed. He shoots web from his wrist. But now Spider-Man's fucking... Angry nerd, angry nerd, rather suck on a frozen turd or eat some crap from a moose. Gonna chug down some poopy juice. These games are such a great big fuck up, they make you wanna throw up all over Spider Man. A Sega CD? What are you waiting for? Nintendo to make one? Uh -huh. You have seen the games, right? Wrong answer, man. Show me. Like if I conduct the rest of the video like this, full motion video, my ass. I'd rather be 